gamers and gentlefolk, hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm going to be your host, The Sound, and this evening I am excited to bring a matchup of Titanic proportions here in Division B East. We are going to be seeing the first place team, Hardstock Support Group, taking on the second place team, the High Inquisitors. This is a best of three series, uh, and I think it's going to be a tight contest. Uh, both teams have accrued 30 points thus far this season. Um, I believe the High Inquisitors is one match ahead. I think they might have played one of their flex matches. Um, but they're neck and neck. Uh, so it is a tight, tight contest between these two. I'm excited. Probably going to be going to three games. Uh, a little background on these teams. The High Inquisitors have kind of retooled their roster. This is their second season in NGS. Uh, I believe they had to withdraw last season. Um, but they're back and better than ever. They've had no trouble thus far in the season. Uh, they've only faced one uh, match defeat thus far. Um... So they're, they're cooking with gas. And on the other side, Hardstuck Support Group are back after a single season hiatus. I think a lot of their squad found other teams to keep their skills honed. Uh, but Hardstuck technically took a season off last season, and they've roared right back into it. And we are in for fireworks, I'm sure. This is the first time both of these squads have made it into the uh, B division. Let's take a look at the divisional standings. And there we have it, 30 points and 30 points. The only difference between these two squads, of course, is that the High Inquisitors has lost one series. Um, they are one series ahead with flex matches and whatnot. But they've won just as much as Hardstuck, so it is absolutely <laughs> neck and neck. Uh, we can also take a look at our Battleground selection as our teams start to filter in to the lobby. There we have it. We are headed to Garden of Terror for Game 1. Uh, that was the map pick of Hardstuck support group after the High Inquisitors won the coin flip and opted for first pick. We also had map bans onto Battlefield of Eternity and Volskaya for the High Inquisitors, and Dragonshire and Brax's holdout on the side of Hardstuck support group. So we've lost our two lane battlegrounds. I believe both of these teams have thus far in the season favored um, Tomb of the Spider Queen and Infernal Shrines. So the tighter rotational maps are something that we might see a little later in the series. Game one, of course, we are headed to one of the largest battlegrounds in Garden of Terror. Talking a little bit more about our home team, the High Inquisitors, uh, they have a very unique approach to draft. Um, whereas many of our teams in the league have players who fill specific roles, uh, the High Inquisitors have a lot more flexibility amongst their roster. So we are likely to see a fair bit of role swapping on that side. They've also been doing a lot of um, roster changing throughout the series. Um, they've had four consistent players, but they've been cycling their fifth pretty consistently on and off. Um, and Blue Abyss, who is on their side, it is their rookie season. So another new entry into NGS, which is very exciting. On the other side, Hardstuck Support Group, that's their fifth season overall. Um, 
Omar G and Random Engineer, I believe, have been around for most of that time. It's their first time in Division B, as mentioned, and so far they are completely undefeated this season. They have dropped two games across eight series, um, but they have not dropped a match yet. And it looks like we are almost there on the lobby side. Thanks to everyone for tuning in. It's a pleasure to have you. Be sure to cheer for whomever you'd like to see take it. The winner of this will become the reigning first place in Division B East. There's everything to play for here. get into the draft for game one. Both of these teams have shown a pretty high Vala priority in their games throughout the season. So I'll be interested to see if that continues in this series. Um, if they're willing to let it go through and kind of trade the Vala, or if neither side will want the other to get the Vala. There is the Stukov ban on the side of Hardstuck support group, one of the most banned heroes against the High Inquisitors, so not too surprising to see it pop up here in the first slot. Whoop. Well, that's no good. Ah, there was a mismatch on who had first pick and whatnot. Very well. So they'll get back into the lobby, and we can get back into the draft here shortly. Uh, there is a bit, you know, I mentioned this is the second season for the High Inquisitors. There has been some previous play amongst various members of the team. Uh, playing on Lady Gal Gal a couple seasons back. Um, and I want to say there was another team where there had been previous synergy. And the same is true on the other side of Hardstuck Support Group. They are a kind of combo squad between the original Hardstuck Support Group that played for the seasons 16 through 13 um, and some members from uh, ICC TBD. Okie doke. We've got everybody back in to the lobby, so let's get back to the draft. Alright, so there's the Junkrat ban. Solid hero for the battleground, able to protect lanes, stall objectives and the vision offered by his traps can make those rotations through the jungle very tricky. Stukov ban, as we saw before. So this is the question as to whether or not we'll see Vala in the second ban slot for Hardstuck support group, or if they're willing to give it to the High Inquisitors. There's the Chromie ban. This is a target ban. Um, one of the more frequently banned heroes into Hardstuck support group. Um, targeting, I believe, Heathen Dawn. So here is the question, if the Vala ban comes out or not. Um, we could see a further narrowing of the healer pool. It's going to be a Zeratul ban instead. Interesting. So likely a first pick Vala. 
on the side of the High Inquisitors. Of course, I've been hyping it up enough that they're probably going to prove me wrong and no one's going to pick Vala, just for fun. <laughs> um, all right. Killer Fairy making good on my prediction, picking up the Demon Hunter in the first pick slot. Um, Hardstuck Support Group and the High Inquisitors both have done a fair bit of varying gameplay thus far this season. So I'll be interested to see if that's kind of the approach. It's going to be Johanna instead. Coupled with the Anduin. So both pretty solid heroes. Joe, just a stat stick of damage and healing. And Anduin has a very powerful cleanse. Um, when it's good, it's good. Next two picks here for the High Inquisitors. It's going to be Rhaegar Leoric. All right. Something of note for both of these teams. Uh, Garden of Terror, of course, a battleground with six mercenary camps on it. I think the highest concentration of non-boss mercenaries on any battleground. Um, so I immediately think of Hogger. There's the Varian ban. Okay. Um, but neither of these teams have played any Hogger games this season. So we are unlikely to see the Null participate in any of these drafts for the evening. Next ban here against Hardstuck Support Group. They've been targeting Heathen Dawn here. We might see another. Instead, it's going to be the Blaze ban. So Hardstuck Support Group could use some safe wave clear and uh, a competent mercenary taker, as well as an offlaner. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see a Greymane or a Tassadar, the Haka. Fair enough. The Haka is an offlaner and a global at that. There's the Kael'thas. Last two picks here for the High Inquisitors. They still have yet to select a main tank. I don't believe they've pulled a double support thus far in the season. So we'll see what Luibis and Ronin have cooked up for us. ETC and Lucio. Okay. So it is double support on the side of the High Inquisitors. Very interesting. Uh, last pick here for Omar G. Perhaps something with healing reduction that can punch through all of the beef and healing. Perhaps a mouth ale. Um, that would also allow for camp taking. It's going to be Cassia instead. All right, fair enough. So let's take a look at these drafts as our teams get ready with the swap phase. All righty. So a double support composition from the High Inquisitors on one of the more macro-focused battlegrounds in the game. Um, that could prove challenging. They don't have the worst uh, mercenary or capture or wave clear, but I do prefer Hardstuck Support Group's draft a little more well suited to the battleground, I believe. Of course, it's not all about that. It's also about how the teams perform and execute, and that won't happen until we're here in the game. And we can introduce our teams here on the left in blue. We've got the High Inquisitors, Killer Fairy on Rhaegar, Tuesday's Free on Leoric, Karama playing Lucio, Blue Abyss on Vala, and Ronin on ETC. And to the right, in red, Hardstuck Support Group. We've got Random Engineer on Johanna, Omar G playing Cassia, CW Ender on Anduin, Heathen Dawn on Kael'thas, and Syl 
playing Dahaka. We can take a look at our level one talents here. It is created the Hunter for Killer Fairy. I'm sorry, Blue Abyss. Um, not too surprising in a double support composition. We've also got Prog Rock for ETC. And on the other side, quests of note, we've got Mana Addict and Enhanced Agility. So quick early wave fair advantage going over to Hardstuck Support Group. And four heroes from the High Inquisitors still hanging out in the mid lane. So they're dropping a bit of bot there. A couple of dismounts from Random Engineer on that rotation down to mid means the High Inquisitors are going to lose half a wave. And that's a lot of damage onto Blue Abyss. All right, one minute on the clock means that all the mercenary camps are available on the battleground. We can see that Omar G has already split off to start this siege camp. Even Dawn still in range to pick up those minions. Sill has had a tough time trading with Tuesdays free. Already having to tap, it looks like. Checking in here, Random Engineer scouts the rest of the High Inquisitors on this Bruiser camp. Random Engineer does still have their trait available. They're going to use it here. Killer Fairy taking a lot of damage. Even Dawn able to connect a couple uh, gravity lapses there, but in the end, everybody makes it out to safety. Hardstuck support group could opt to invade here. They do have the global. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily in their best interest to do so, and they will opt not to. Instead, splitting off to the top side for this siege camp. I think this is a great plan. The first objective here on the bot left is very challenging to contest if you are on the right-hand side of the battleground. So we frequently see red teams completely forego even contesting. Random Engineer might step up for a stall or two with the Johanna flashlight. Looks like it's just going to be good for one. Fair enough. Sill still has the Rush Stalker available. So we haven't seen any need for the global yet. I would love to see Sill swap to the bot lane here. Even Dawn rotated on by Ronin and Blue Abyss. That'll be the first takedown, first blood going over to the High Inquisitors. Kel'Thas playing with fire. Huh? Get it? Uh, and losing in that 2v1. Random Engineer getting chased to the end of the Earth. This is kind of what the Lucio composition excels at, of course. Checking in on the top right. Tuesday's Free has scouted that Hardstuck Support Group are getting this Bruiser Camp out. Um, I'd been talking about the rotation I wish I'd seen the global make the bot lane. Um, the objectives always spawn bot top, bot, bot top on this battleground. So it is always good to have your global in either the top lane to start and then the bot lane for the next objective. A pretty big wave here. There's a big route onto two Omar G fends in Tuesday's free, taking a lot of damage. Sill has opted to use the Brush Stalker to get down to bot lane. All of the High Inquisitors here, a five hero commitment. There's the stun onto two from Ronin. Omar G taking a lot of damage, healing reduction as well. There's the pull from Ender. Is it good enough? Karama able to chase him down. A lot of damage from the Living Bombs, but it's still two takedowns to one. And now this wave has to be tended to, especially with the Siege Giants at the back. Let's see, where are we with talent? Strain momentum, so potentially an auto attack build for Tuesdays free on the Leoric. Um, anything out of the ordinary. Seraphim's hit. Okay. 
more blinds. Still gets a big drag, but they're falling low. They have to pop the essence there. Tuesday's free is not here. Once again, this is 5v4. This time in favor of hard stuck support group. A lot of damage onto Ronin here. There's the fend in, and they will go down. Still unable to connect with that next drag. Um, I've actually never seen Seraphim. So what does this thing do? Okay. Against your primary enemy hero? What does that even mean? Anyway, it means more blinds. I can respect that. Sun King's Fury. So bomb spread is more potent. I think that's an excellent tech pick into the double support composition. Lucio and Rhaegar both relatively short range as far as their healing output is concerned. So the High Inquisitors are likely to stay clumped up more than average. We've got Heroics online for Hardstuck support group. It's Falling Sword for Johanna. Very interesting. With a Light Bomb, Phoenix. High Inquisitors have also secured their Heroics at this point. A huge stun off, lands onto three. Ronin sliding in. Has yet to pick their Heroic, has opted for the Mosh Pit. All right. Um, da -da 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 -da. Ball Lightning, Isolation. There's the Mosh. Huge Mosh. A great cleanse. Gets Heathen Dawn out of trouble. This 4v4 is seeing a lot of heroics thrown back and forth, but in the end, the double support of the High Inquisitor is able to get out alive. Ronin might look for the slide here, opting to not do it. Of course, this whole time, we've got Two Stays Free and Sill fighting over the objective here. This would be the Garden Terror point for Hardstuck Support Group. So the High Inquisitors would love to stop this if they can. Um, there's the Entomb onto Omar G. They're in a lot of trouble, but a great pull from Ender. There's the Silence. Tuesday's free, falling very low. They will go down. Blue Abyss down to half HP and no mana. Random Engineer looking for a couple more dismounts. Still might have the drag here, unable to connect. So this is the first objective going over to Hardstuck Support Group. Very well played from the red team. Ender with those timely Leap of Faiths, keeping everyone from certain doom. Four hero commitment from Hardstuck Support Group here in the mid lane. After getting through the front wall, looks like they're going to back up. Still is pushing in bot lane with a plant terror. But top is getting free cleared by two stays free. I heard the drag the sound, but I, I guess it did not connect. Ronin looking for a big slide. Even Dawn taking a lot of damage here. Big gravity lapse connects. And it looks like Hardstuck Support Group are likely to escape here with Random Engineer committing the Heaven's Fury. Nope, that's not what it's called. Falling Sword. Heaven's Fury is the 20 upgrade. Uh, either way, the AoE cleanse will get Hardstuck Support Group out and to safety. So after first objective, Hardstuck Support Group able to secure a fort, but outside of that, not too much damage done to the High Inquisitor's structures. And we're back at the Mercenaries. Honestly, I thought it was going to be more of a problem for the High Inquisitors, but they're doing a great job keeping up with Hardstuck Support Group as far as the experience is concerned. They're right there with one another. It's kind of crazy. I mean, Hardstuck is going to get a little bit more passive XP now that that fort is down, but that's kind of negligible. Um, you end up losing XP because of the way the catapults work and blah, blah, blah. No one cares. Um, we've got 13s, anything of interest. A Wraith Walk build for Leoric, opting for Omnis Wraith at level 13, giving damage reduction. Um, Lucio's gone for Heavy Casters, so they have the ability to stun with their trait now. Uh, Vala going for Tempered by Discipline. Auto attack is now healing a fair bit. 
We saw the mic check from Ronin there. Offering cooldown reduction. Heat and Dawn peeling once again with the gravity lapse. <laughs> Vision buff. Okay. That makes sense when considering the level 7 from Heathen Dawn. More damage on the spread and a wider spread range. Bot lane going unattended to means the High Inquisitors are a little tardy to the party for this objective. Heathen Dawn begins the channel. I don't know if they're going to be able to make it in time. They're able to do it. They get pushed off there. Sill waddling in. They have their... Oh my god, what a massive mosh pit. But there's the turnaround with the falling sword. Ronin deep in the back line here, but I hardstuck are split. Omar G on an island. Random Engineer is able to get them out of trouble. Heathen Dawn now falling very low. And they have yet to complete their level 1 mana attic, so they don't have their arcane barrier yet. Blue Abyss, full health. It's going to be tough for Hardstuck support group to make much out of this engagement now. They're a little bit ahead on experience. So I think that's something they've got to be pretty happy about. They got a little bit of damage here. They didn't get the minion wave up to the wall, unfortunately. Uh -uh -uh. Other 13s of note. Gloves of Alacrity. Okay. Excellent. Basic attack range for Omar G. I think the added safety range makes a lot of sense. Being able to kite the double support comp makes it a little bit easier to be in a safe distance from the ETC. There's the Mana Addict for Heathen Dawn. Um, so they've added a bit more safety. They're able to pop the Arcane Barrier when things get a little spicy. Hardstuck support group getting a little bit of chip damage there onto the mid fort. Tuesday's free spooking in. They might look for the Entomb, but the rest of the High Inquisitor is kind of far behind. And once again, we've got high uh, Hardstuck kind of split around the terrain here. The High Inquisitor is a little bit tighter of a grouping. Level 16's on both sides. Random Engineer opting for Shrinking Vacuum. Interesting. Not the typical level 1. Um, we've also got Martial Law and Manticore. So both auto attackers unlocking their percent damage talents. Ender has gotten two charges of their blends now at 16. Tuesday's free, continuing to get a lot of damage reduction here. The High Inquisitor is getting a fair bit done here. There's a big slide. Sill gets the silence onto Rhaegar. Tuesday's free falling very low, as is Sill. Chase in onto Killer Fairy. It looks like Blue Abyss might make it out alive. There's the stun onto Omar G, but they receive the Light Bomb. A great cleanse from Karama gets Ronin out of trouble, but... Blue Abyss will go down. What a drag landing onto Killer Fairy. So Hardstuck Support Group able to play the patient game and in the end win out in that team fight. Very well played on the side of Hardstuck. The Entomb from Tuesday's Free continued to split them up, but Hardstuck were able to weather the storm nonetheless. All right, so we'll see Sill probably take care of this mid-fort here in just a second. Still two seconds until Killer Fairy is back on the Rhaegar. So Hardstuck support group would love to take out the rest of the outer structures from the High Inquisitors. They'll do just that here now with about a half-level lead. Of course... 
the High Inquisitors are far from out of the game. One massive mosh pit from Ronin could be all they need to turn this around. Bala up to 100 stacks on Creed of the Hunter, so they've got 2% bonus damage to their hatred uh, damage bonus. All right, interesting. Hard Stack Support Group choosing to play for this objective. I can understand it. They have the uh, threat of Garden Terrors up against them. Ronin trying to defend Hard Stack Support Group off, but taking so much damage from Omar G the whole time. There's the Earth Grasp totem. Omar G in a lot of trouble here, but there is the cleanse from Johanna. Two stays free, gets the slow onto Omar G. And there's the drag onto Blue Abyss. They're able to vault out and receive the Ancestral. Ronin moshes, doesn't catch anyone. Two stays free goes down first. So Blue Abyss still alive, but with Leoric going down, that is likely to be objective going over to Hardstuck Support Group. Of course, the High Inquisitors know that Hardstuck are splitting their attention, given that they have the Leoric vision to work with. They're not going to try and contest that Bruiser camp. They have to get up to the top lane to take care of this other Bruiser camp. And the half-level lead has grown for Hardstuck Support Group now up to a full level lead and just around the corner from their Storm Talents. It's going to be a huge momentum swing right as the next objective spawns here in top lane. With the High Inquisitors still a level away from their Storm Talents, I'd be surprised to see them contest this objective even with the threat of the Garden Terrors. Speaking of Storm Talents, we've got Heaven's Fury for Random Engineer, Titan's Revenge for Omar G, Censure for uh, Ender, Flamethrower for Heathen Dawn, and Contagion for Syl. All right, down 20s, the High Inquisitors get a couple pokes, but they're not willing to commit any harder than that. The map is in a tough state for the home team. They've got siege camps in mid and bot pushing against them in addition to the Garden Terrors. I like Hardstuck Support Group's patience here. Killer Fairy out pretty far, but Karama able to get the cleanse. And there's the mount up. Rhaegar taking a lot of damage, and they will go down. Hardstuck Support Group playing very patiently, waiting for anyone from the High Inquisitors to show clearing these minions. And they were able to collapse. Well done. High Inquisitors have unlocked their or their Storm Talents now. Deathmosh for Ronin on the ETC. It might not matter. This could be game for Hardstuck Support Group depending on how it's played. Lots of damage now onto Karama. There's the drag as well. Oh my gosh, unkillable used, but in the end they fall. Tuesday's free match, huge, followed up by the Mosh. Amazing defense here. Blue Abyss able to free auto this whole time. So core down to 20%. Let's see if they can clean up these catapults and siege giants. There's the Garden Terror as well. Core shield still down. It looks like the High Inquisitors are going to make the defense here. A huge set of heroics from Two Stays Free and Ronin. The Silence and Tomb into the Mosh Pit. A fantastic combination. Uh, I believe they caught Random Engineer in the Silence and Tomb. I'm not even sure if the um, Falling Sword was back up. It does have a lot of cooldown reduction thanks to the level 20... Um, but you can't pop it if you're silenced. 
so perfect setup for the Nosh. The High Inquisitors are using their uh, hero advantage to seal away this top bruiser camp. Um, we will likely see them push in the top lane as well. We've got Farflight Quiver for Blue Abyss, which means that they can outrange structures. Um, so we could see the High Inquisitors set up shop around a building and kind of dare Hardstuck support group to engage into them. All of their heroics, if they're able to go off in a full 5v5, makes them a really tough ball to get any takedowns against. And depending on who you take down first, if it's Ronin on the ETC, um, that could end up being a really big opportunity for the High Inquisitors thanks to the Death Mosh. High Inquisitors opt to get all of the mercenary camps off the battleground and uh, forego that seed. This is where having the global advantage really helps Hardstuck support group. Sill, with their Brush Stalker, is able to apply pressure to the top lane as they so choose, and still make it in time for any fight anywhere else on the battleground. All five heroes from the High Inquisitor showing in mid lane there, next to the objective announced on the top left-hand side of the battleground. So we'll see. I would expect to see Hardstuck support group play for this objective while Sill pushes waves in the bot side. The High Inquisitors have not shown anywhere, but if they commit to ganking the global, honestly, that might be the best play for them, committing to ganking Sill. If they're able to get the Silence and Tomb and the Mosh, I believe they'd be able to kill the Dahaka. This is not a Garden Terror point for Hardstuck. But they've opted to show up to the objective. Sill has escorted a couple of catapults in. Ronin finds them here. They commit the burrow. Oh, the slide does not connect, however. Kurama trying to chase him down. But we do have the rest of Hardstuck support group rotating down. Just a little out of range for the mosh pit from Ronin. That would have been an excellent staggered pickoff for the High Inquisitors to get. And now Hardstuck support group, I think it's a tough decision as to what to do. They're going to collapse here onto two. There's the light bomb. What a great slide from Ronin. They're making it out. Karama gets the cleanse as well. All right. So light bomb is down. Won't be available for the next objective. Of course, there are still catapults, you know, top lane has its catapult, mid lane has its two catapults, in fact. Uh, Sill still has the Brush Stalker available. So, once again, the High Inquisitors committing here is kind of playing into that global benefit. A lot of damage there onto the Johanna. Tuesday's free spooking in here. But if we check back at the core, Sill has got these catapults connected. This is probably going to be the game. Yeah, game one going over to Hardstuck support group. GG and well played. So in the end, the global advantage on the large battleground was exactly what Hardstuck support group needed to secure game one. Uh, level 20 could have been an opportunity for the High Inquisitors to turn things around, but unfortunately they had fallen so far behind on the battleground at that point that they were unable to claw their way back. We can take a look at our post-game stats here. Blue Abyss, top of their team with 65,000 hero damage, Pales in comparison to Omar G's 
almost 87,000. So auto attack, Cassia, really bring the pain to the front line of the High Inquisitors. Checking in on our talent builds, see if we've got anything too out of the ordinary. We saw Karama use the Summer Anthem at least once to save themselves, and then uh, a Living Bomb got them anyway, but it, 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 I think when playing a Hyper Carry, having the unkillable on 20 makes a lot of sense. Um, unfortunately, once again, it was just that map pressure that double support compositions can struggle with at times. So let's head back to our Battleground selection to see where we might be headed for Game 2. High Inquisitors opting for first pick in Game 1. We'll see if they switch that up now in Game 2. Um, I'd expect them to hold, stick to their guns. I think picking... I think first pick makes a lot of sense given how many shared heroes are in each other's uh, hero pools. Being able to pick the Vala or Varian or Rhaegar first can be very uh, polarizing. It didn't work, of course, for game one, but that doesn't mean that it's not a sound strategy. For all those who tuned in in the middle of game one, welcome. Glad to have you. Thanks for tuning in. We are in a best of three with the top two teams in the standings for Division B East. The High Inquisitors, a close second to Hardstuck Support Group. Speaking of their draft strategy and approach, I'll say they both have a relatively creative approach to and flexible approach to the draft. Um, the High Inquisitors, I think, far and above anyone else in the division, they've played uh, 41 heroes across the cast, so almost half of the cast uh, of heroes. So a fair bit of diversity there. And 56% uh, percent of those heroes have only been played for a single game. So they are real wild cards. On the other side, uh, the Hardstuck Support Group folks have played only 30 heroes, but also 56% of those for only one game. So the pool is a little narrower for Hardstuck Support Group, but they're able to flex into those uh, niche picks when they look good. All right, and we're headed to um, Tomb of the Spider Queen as selected by the High Inquisitors. So they have opted to change their tune going for the map selection this time. We'll see if the battleground makes all the difference. Hardstuck support group are very comfortable on this battleground as well. There is the Stukov ban once again. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, last game, these were Junkrat and Chromie bans on the side of the High Inquisitors. I think both solid heroes for this battleground as well. So not only narrowing the hero pool of Heathen Dawn a bit, but taking care of some of the peskier vision and stall assassins around those turn-ins. There's another Zeratul ban. All right, hard stuck, sticking to their guns on the first round of bans. A 
Last game it was Junkrat. We'll see if the High Inquisitors want to keep up. Yeah, both teams sticking to their guns on the first bands. Last time, the High Inquisitors first pick Vala. We'll see if Hardstuck do the same here. Yeah, the Vala priority definitely coming out between these two teams. And it makes a lot of sense. She's a very powerful hero when piloted well. Um, doesn't necessarily give away any aspect of your draft either, so a relatively safe early pick. We'll see how High Inquisitors get started here. Anduin Diablo. Great. So, a lot more staying power on the front line through the Diablo as compared to ETC. Next two picks here for Hardstuck. Wave clear is of the utmost importance. Wow, that is an early white main. Um, a bit of a specialty pick from Ender. And there's Sill locking in the Leoric. Okie doke. So Leoric and Vala both put pressure on the Diablo um, through percent damage. Joe taken off the table. I think that makes a lot of sense given the battleground. They've already selected Diablo, so unless they want to run Johanna in the off lane, which would be a miserable matchup into Leoric, the ban is appropriate. I expect to see an off lane ban here. It's going to be the Samuro ban. Samuro, a little bit of a pocket pick for the High Inquisitors. Once again, it's thanks to all of their role flexibility that Hardstuck are having to really consider and flex these last bands. Uh, next picks for the High Inquisitors. They really need some wave clear. Sylvanas will bring wave clear, as will Sonya. Of course, Sylvanas doesn't really get that wave clear until level 4. Um, that said, Hardstuck aren't really threatening to push waves all game just yet. We could see a Tassadar here for Heathen Dawn. It's going to be Kael'thas again. And Random Engineer on the ETC. Okay. Last pick for the side of High Inquisitors. Um, yeah, they they could use a little more wave clear for my taste. Um, it just makes the battleground so much easier to play around. And there's the Tassadar. Alrighty. Let's take a look here as our teams get ready for the next battleground on Tomb of the Spider Queen, game two. All right, we've got a lot more staying power on the front line with Diablo for the High Inquisitors. Hardstuck support group, of course, do have answers in the form of Leoric and Vala. As mentioned, Vala's percent damage coming online at level 16. Tassadar could be very punishing for the ETC. We might see the um, terrain crossing power slide crowd surfer at level 4 as a tech pick to deal with the... Um, force walls. But, you know, if a random engineer ever slides left, I would expect to see a wall go up right behind them. Let's introduce our teams once again. The High Inquisitor is trying to take us to a game three in the series. We've got Killer Fairy on Tassadar, Tuesday's Free playing Sylvanas, Kurama on Anduin, Blue Abyss on Diablo, and Ronin playing Sonya. To the right in red, Hardstuck Support Group. We've got Random Engineer on ETC, Ender on White Main, Omar G playing Vala, Heathen Dawn on Kael'thas, and Syl playing the Leoric. 
Level 1 talents. It's Creed of the Hunter once again, this time for Omar G. Uh, no quests for the High Inquisitors. Both teams playing very safely. Hardstuck. Didn't want to be late to respond to any sort of Sylvanas side lane push. Bluebis able to pick up all the gems from that wave. And an early wave clear advantage to High Inquisitors. I think they'll probably continue to have this wave clear advantage. But once again, Random Engineer steals away the globes. Hardstuck support group really doing a good job zoning the home team from those regen globes. Blue Abyss stuns in onto Sill here. That's a lot of damage onto the Leoric, and that will be first blood going over to the High Inquisitors. A five hero collapse in mid lane. And Blue Abyss does a great job body blocking Random Engineer from picking up those gems. Of course, they dropped a wave in top. They'll get here in time for half of the experience and all of the gems. And Leoric, of course, already back up on the battleground thanks to his trait undying. And check in, Ronin continuing to trade aggressively here. They've opted for a slam build at level one. Hardstuck support group getting their bruiser camp out early. We've got the High Inquisitors doing the same with Karama and Tuesdays Free. Really excellent allocation of resources here. There's the stun onto Killer Fairy, Eden Dawn, following up with the Living Bomb, but unable to connect it to Gravity Lapse. Blue Abyss gets a free turn in here on the top side, so first 12 gems in the bank for the High Inquisitors. Level fours unlocked on both sides. Mercenary Queen for Tuesdays free, rather than uh, what you call it, the poison one. But, you know, the wave clear one. Uh, and of course, hard stick support group rotated Omar G down to the bot lane, rather than supporting the Bruiser camp to get that siege camp out as well. Random Engineer has not opted for Crowd Surfer at level four. Blue Abyss. In onto Heathen Dawn. There's the root follow up onto Random Engineer, but everyone's going to make it out to safety. So, a lot of damage onto the Mid Fort Wall. All of Mid Fort Wall, in fact, taken down with that Bruiser Camp push. Very effective for the side of Hardstuck Support Group. On the bot side, this Siege Camp has gotten a fair bit of work done itself, getting through that bot side tower. Killer Fairy channeling here. Random Engineer gets the slide, but a timely leap of faith from Kurama will get Killer Fairy out of trouble. Neither side have banked or have picked up enough gems to secure a turn in the High Inquisitors just now with enough. Even Dawn finding two with the Gravity Lapse. Uh, who's got their gems? It's mostly on Ronin, on Sonya in bot lane. So, if they're able to get theirs turned in, that'll be a huge weight off of the High Inquisitor's back. They're going to get the opportunity to do it here. Syl is going to have to choose either the wave or to stop the turn in. And it looks like, in the end, the turn in will go through. So that's a huge bank for the side of the High Inquisitors, and they're able to get the rest of their gems turned in here on the top side. Blue Abyss gets the flip onto Ender. This is a whitening in a, a far out position, but Tuesday's free is the first to fall. So first takedown for Hardstuck Support Group, just one takedown apiece thus far. Trading the... Uh, Still kill for the objective. A bit of a bummer. Random Engineer in a lot of trouble. There's the root. And they saved their slide. Really diligent play from the ETC there. 
Blue Abyss not messing around. They're in under Random Engineer once again. Oh, what a great uh, Shock Ray from Killer Fairy paired with Psionic Echo. And that is one dead ETC. Of course, Blue Abyss able to Shower Charge back in as quickly as they were thanks to their level 7 uh, Diabolical Momentum. The auto attack build for um, Diablo has not been in vogue for some time, but uh, it's happening. And it's looking good so far. What other talents do we have here at level 7? Anything of note? Desperate Prayer for Karama on the Anduin. Intercession for Ender on White Mane. That makes a lot of sense. Looks like we've got our players dealing with some amount of technical difficulty. Darn internet service providers. Um, so hopefully the lag spikes will clear up shortly. <laughs> Leoric has opted for Neil Peasants at four. Which is a little surprising to me. Um, But I suppose it helps with the uh, uh, web weavers. They are asking me if I am ready, but I cannot message them. All right, and they'll get back into it. Excellent, so we'll get back into it. All right, Blue Abyss and friends pushing here in the top lane. The High Inquisitors on a tear here. Random Engineer slides in and finds Killer Fairy, but Hardstuck support group was not in range to follow up with any meaningful damage. Hardstuck are ahead towards their heroics here. Blue Abyss gets a great flip into Shadow Charge. Random Engineer still doing a great job to hold that power slide. Blue Abyss is really doing a fantastic job controlling these bushes. Having trouble, stay Checking in on the top side, it's a lot of damage onto Hardstuck support group, but still on the bottom side, able to get their gems turned in for the next objective, right as heroics are online for both of our teams. We've got Mosh Pit, Scarlet Aegis, Reign of Vengeance, and Tomb, and Kael'thas is choosing. And on the other side, Black Hole, Wailing Arrow, Apocalypse, Leap, and Anduin is choosing. All right, Phoenix for Heaven Dawn. Is this a dome game? Are we going to see Power Word Salvation? No, it's Light Bomb. A lot more common choice. A full five hero commitment to the top half of the battleground. So the High Inquisitors really pressuring this top side here. We've also got Sill in mid walking that Web Weaver up. Bottom already cleared up and Ronin will be able to make this rotation to clean up whatever is left of mid. Random Engineer warding that rotation to try and slow the High Inquisitors down. So first objective they were able to get get about a third of that mid fort, um, but nothing in comparison to that first mid fort takedown for the High Inquisitors. Of course, that is the power of a Sylvanas composition, getting a pick during the objective phase, being able to uh, shut down. Oh my God! A wall into the. Shadow Charge still finds Tuesday's free, but they're happy to sit there and auto. They do have the Wraith Walk to escape. Hardstuck trying to ward the top turn in with Random Engineer while the rest of the squad picked up that Bruiser Camp meant that the cow was easy pickings for that Shadow Charge Force Wall combo. Ronin will get their gems in. 
Tuesday's free, already onto the mercenaries here, as is still on the bot side. It doesn't look like we've got a rotation incoming from the High Inquisitors, so they'll trade the Bruiser for the Siege Camp. Hard Suck Support Group also able to prep Top Wave so that the Webweaver is going to spawn all the way back at the High Inquisitor's fort. Uh, Webweavers lose HP at a steady rate once they spawn, so the closer that you can get your objective spawned to your enemy structures, the longer uptime they have to hit those structures. Which is why Hard Stuck prepping that wave was so beneficial. Blue Abyss, once again, finding the follow-up on Killer Fairy's Force Wall. I don't know that the Wailing Arrow necessarily had the biggest impact, but once ETC is down, it is very hard for Hard Stack Support Group. What a stun! There's the cleanse onto Omar G, though. Ender able to save the Vala with a timely heroic and intercession. Zill has already used their Entomb. They're just going to walk around and get some damage reduction with their level 13. Speaking of 13s, what else do we have at 13? Uh, Remorseless. Oh my god, Omar G in a lot of trouble once again. Blue Abyss really coming online here. Ronin finds Random Engineer coming in. There's the Mosh onto one, immediately interrupted by the APOC. Two stays free, will Haunting Wave to safety. And Tomb up in the next 10 seconds, but I think Killer Fairy is going to make it out alive. There's another stun onto Ronin. That's 20 gems that Sonya stands to lose. That is a big hit to their economy. Entomb is up. There's the Entomb onto two. Blue Abyss able to get a lot of healing with their level 13. Still will fall. But I think Hardstuck Support Group are going to be able to pick up those gems. So trading three for one. Of course, Diablo has already respawned thanks to their Black Soulstone trait. Uh, Random Engineer continuing to zone for the rest of his squad while they get busy on boss. Even Dawn, having eaten one of those boss stuns already very low, a huge silence onto two and Blue Abyss running amok with their attack speed. Random Engineer got a lot of cooldown reduction, so they're able to mosh once again. Boss has, boss has leashed. Random Engineer falling low. Ronin leaps into the back line, finds Heathen Dawn, and continue to chase onto Omar G here. One more slam would do it. Sill is the one to fall. We also lost the ETC there in the engagement. So a scrappy fight to say the least, but in the end, the High Inquisitor is able to turn it in their favor, which will give them the opportunity to capture the boss, applying additional pressure to that top lane keep. Omar G able to turn in 22 here. It's not going to be enough for the objective. And it looks like Ender did not have the opportunity to make that rotation. Um, level 16, Domination, yep. The attack speed that I've been talking about is, of course, from Cruelty at level 13. Every time Diablo stuns a hero, uh, his auto attack speed increases by 50 for 7 seconds. Uh, which, as it turns out, can be a lot of attack speed. And when your attacks are giving you cooldown reduction, it's a lot of stuns, and it's a righteous cycle. So, whale, or I'm sorry, Black Arrows from Sylvanas means top keep falls to the boss, a full level lead in favor of the High Inquisitors. They are making a convincing case for a three-game series thus far. I would love to see them guarding these turn-ins. Of course, they have seen Hardstuck Support Group showing on this mid-wave, getting that Bruiser Camp out. Random Engineer scouting this bot side turn-in. Omar G will show. Who's got to turn in the gems? It's Ender. Even Dawn won't be enough. 
Ronin trying to bait the engagement here. Gets the stun onto Random Engineer. Blue Abyss unable to find the domination thanks to and they're able to get their gems in on the top side. Uh, thanks to the mic check from Random Engineer. So that boop kind of saving their bacon. Or is it saving their ribs? Because, you know, they're a cow. Anyway, Silk could die here. Looks like they're going to make it out alive. Random Engineer, great dismount from Killer Fairy to stop ETC from getting into their whole team. There was the intercession. Random Engineer catches two. There's the APOC. Ronin in the back line. A silence onto lots of hard stuck, and Ender is falling very low. Ronin continuing to pester here. Random Engineer trying to get the rest of their team out. Even Dawn stuck with this Diablo, but it looks like they're going to be able to make it out alive. Blue Abyss falling low on mana there. Random Engineer slides under the tower, but it looks like they're able to back up. Bot Fort went down while this extended top lane fight went on, uh, but mid lane ended up not getting much done. Still a healthy wave down here, but Killer Fairy and Tuesdays Free will have this cleaned up. Lickety split. Man, that mid fort or mid keep still very low as well. Of course, the High Inquisitors are ahead to the next objective phase as well as to their Storm Talents. Hardstuck support group kind of need to force a fight here. Unfortunately, Sill was unable to connect with the Entomb. This wave will be enough gems. Oh my gosh, Sill! What are you doing there? They're going to go down. Uh, so this is now a 5v4 in favor. Do we have the leap? Ronin... Yeah, and the 20s are in. Blue Abyss uses the Hellgate to finish off the ETC takedown. They've got Black Arrows up, so they'll finish taking care of the mid-keep. Blue Abyss trying to get the Sun onto Omar G. Unfortunately, they are unable to find that wall bang onto the mid-keep. Leoric will be up shortly. But ETC still has about 30 seconds left. Um, let's talk about the other Storm Talents. We saw Force Barrier. I think that's a great pickup, given how well Killer Fairy and Blue Abyss are synergizing on the Force Wall. Shadow Charge combo. Um, we've also, we saw the Hellgate, of course. Um, Deafening Blast for Tuesday's Free. And Ignore Pain for Ronin on the Sonya. So full five hero commitment to the top lane. They've got three catapults at their back and they'll have a web weaver here shortly. Bot lane is of no concern for hardstuck support group, but the level 20 engagement, oh, Blue Abyss narrowly shoving random engineer off to the side of that. Killer Fairy able to peel the team away with that black hole. Blue Abyss has taken a lot of damage here thanks to the level 16 from Omar G. Manticore making it very challenging for Leoric to stand and deliver at this point. Interesting level 16 pick for Random Engineer. The auto attack speed slow. A bit of a tech pick for the auto attack Diablo. Still falling low. Random Engineer immediately interrupted on the Mosh once again, but it's still who's taking the most damage. Ronin trying to chase him down. Blue Abyss here. Auto attacking to save themselves, but they won't make it out alive. In the end, they do find the kills onto ETC and White Mane. And of course, Diablo had a full Soul Stone, so they are walking back from spawn as we speak. No more healer on the side of Hardstuck support group means Omar G is going to struggle to deal with the damage from Tuesday's Free and Killer Fairy even with their level six or level 13 tempered by discipline still falling very low once again unfortunately Ronin unable to connect with that uh, spear 
Even Dawn able to pop the arcane barrier, but it's not enough to save the game. So GG to the High Inquisitors, clutching it out to bring us to a game three in the series. Awesome. What a game for the home team. They looked very comfortable on the battleground. They looked very comfortable with their roll swaps. Um, it shows why both of these teams are number one and two in the standings. Uh, we can take a look at the post-game stats here as our teams decide where we're going to be headed for game three. So top of the lobby for damage goes to Killer Fairy with nearly 65,000 hero damage. Omar G unable to match that with the auto attack Vala. Uh, still contributing much more experience than Ronin on the Sonya, but the takedowns going 13 to 6 in favor of the High Inquisitors definitely favored... Um, biased, rather, the experience towards them. Um, what else do we have here? Level 16, Ronin opting for Nerves of Steel. Um, often you see Giant Slammer with Slam at 1 and 4, so dealing with a little bit of tricky damage on the side of Hardstuck Support Group. They teched for the survivability option. Um, anything else out of the ordinary? Same build out of Heathen Dawn. Yeah, this all looks about the same. Very well played to our two teams. All right, let's head back to our battleground selection. Gossamer saving their Rump. Rump is so much better. Rump, Rump would have been better. I like that. Well played, sir. Well played. Or ma'am. Or pronoun of your choosing. Um, I'm going to be interested if we end up going to Infernal Shrines here for the next game. Both teams have played it a fair bit. But with how dominant Hardstuck Support Group was on that larger battleground, uh, Garden of Terror, I'd be interested to see them take us to maybe Alterac or Cursed Hollow. Something that kind of suits their global play style that they showed so masterfully in game one. I'm also a bit surprised that the High Inquisitors opted for double support game one, but not game two. Uh, Tomb of the Spider Queen, you can do some funky double support uh, main tank Zool type things um, to make up for the wave clear and because of how small it is it's lots of team fighting and so the double support can get a lot of value in those scenarios um, do our teams need to adjust their draft approach at this point Stukov and Zeratul have been Hardstuck Support Group's steady bans in the first half of the draft for both games one and two. I don't know how many uh, Zeratul games the High Inquisitors have. Um, but it might just be that Hardstuck Support Group feel that it is a bit of an Achilles heel for them and so any number of games would be too many for them to stomach, especially with how uh, flexible and fluid the High Inquisitors have been in their approach in their approach to draft thus far this season. On the other side, I think the High Inquisitors have done pretty well with their Junkrat, Chromie Br Junkrat and Chromie bands. Even Dawn has continued to look very comfortable on the Kale Thos, um, connecting some pretty big gravity lapses time and time again. But 
the vision play that both Junkrat and Chromie allow a team to do can be so punishing. Time traps being an invisible ward. Junkrat's being visible, but <laughs> uninteractable nonetheless. Uh, so it can be very challenging to play around those tools for any frontliner trying to flank in. Um, which is just to say that I think if they keep with those bands, that would be a plenty good strategy for them. I'm also a little bit surprised with how game two went. Uh, thus far in the season, statistically speaking at least, um, Hard Suck Support Group have had the cleaner slash tighter teamfight engagements. Um, they have a higher takedown to uh, death ratio than the High Inquisitors. We saw that a bit in Game 1, um, but Game 1 was mostly about the macro play. Game 2, though, however, definitely felt like the High Inquisitors were able to kind of chaos their comp, chaos comp their way through the uh, white main healing. Which is, of course, I think, a underrated strat uh, in most divisions of NGS play. Um, lots of times we focus on trying to get things that are uh, well thought out and um, nuanced, but we're not that good at the video game. So <laughs> uh, the chaos element... Oh, that's the wrong. There we go. So we are headed to Infernal Shrines for game three. It's the selection of the High Inquisitors. So as predicted, this is their battleground of choice. Um, No Hogger, still. So, I guess the Leoric becomes one of the higher prio off laners. Uh, Blaze, of course, still very powerful. Um, All right, got some stuff sorted out with our teams as they get set in the lobby. But we should be off to the races here shortly. NGS's favorite map. Infernal Shrines. Most popular map? Perhaps not favorite, but certainly most popular. Uh, it is played, I don't know the stats, but a lot more. <laughs> Poor Sky Temple, sitting there, unbanned, unpicked, forgotten. <laughs> Let's get into the draft for game three. So Hardstuck Support Group, they've stuck with the Stukov Zeratul bands in games one and two. We'll see if the Diablo showing from Blue Abyss last game has them adjusting their thoughts and priorities. I expect the Stukov ban will stay, but I'm curious to see if the Zeratul ban stays. Thank you. 
Junkrat. Yep, Junkrat. Still very powerful on the battleground, offering a lot of safe shrine poke. Um, Chromie will fill a simil similar role, so I expect the High Inquisitors to keep that band the same. Here's the my big question mark. We'll see if Hardstuck choose to pivot their plan here. I'll also just say Hardstuck Support Group, hands down, one of my favorite NGS team names. Um, it's so, it's so good. And that, coupled with their logo, I just... Chef's kiss. And they keep their ban strategy going. Um, the Zer tool, too big a threat for them, I guess. Um, I expect this, once again, to be the Chromie. Yeah. So, same first half bans across all three games. It was first big Vala in games one and two. I expect no different here in game three. But Hardstuck, really thinking about it, taking their time in this draft. Blaze, okay. They didn't get the chance in game one to get the Blaze. It was the third ban from High Inquisitors, so. We'll see if that's a big difference maker for Syl in the offlane. Diablo and Anduin once again. And hard to blame them. They got a lot of mileage out of it there in game one. Infernal Shrines, another excellent battleground for Diablo's terrain-based stuns. We'll see what Hardstuck support group answer back with. We could see a Tychus pick here. Really solid on the battleground. It's going to be Vala Tassadar instead. So both damage dealers picked up for Hardstuck support group. The High Inquisitors could take this opportunity to ban the Johanna once again, is what I would expect. The Haka instead. Alright, fair enough. Predicting a uh, main tank blaze switcheroo. Of course, this means that the Johanna is still on the table. Um, okay, respect ban onto the Sonya from Ronin. We could see an offlane Joe here. Uh, it doesn't necessarily look bad. Leoric is still available for Hardstuck support group, so we're getting into a, a weird rock, paper, scissors, because Anduin is there for the High Inquisitors, so the pull would negate the Leoric. Going for the more straightforward offlane pick in Leoric, and that is one of the better matchups into Johanna. Uh, we saw Random Engineer pick Falling Sword game one. I think it was to deal with a Leoric pick. Um, fight to my last breath. And you're opting for Rhaegar. Random Engineer last picks the Anubarak. All right. So final choice here for the High Inquisitors. We are likely going to see another ranged damage dealer, but... They have picked some oddball picks here. It could be Akira for all I know. Um, they have played it thus far this season, so it's anyone's guess. With every death comes on, huh? All right, Hanzo. Fair enough. So let's get into, or let's let them load into the game as they swap up and take a look at our two drafts. Diablo Leoric for the High Inquisitors is a sturdy front line, certainly a little bit sturdier than Anubarak. Um, 
Blaze, of course, is very tanky, but Anub, one of the lowest HP tanks in the game. Uh, Hanzo and Sylv don't necessarily pressure Anub too much. I think the beetles from Anub will be very helpful. It's a real question mark for me. Um, I, I think I'm leaning towards the High Inquisitors, but it's really anyone's guess. So let's see if I'm right or not. Is this going to be the first loss for Hardstuck Support Group? If so, it'll be at the hands of the High Inquisitors. Here on the left in blue, Killer Fairy on Sylvanas. Tuesday's free playing Hanzo, Kurama on Anduin, Blue Abyss on Diablo, and Ronin playing Leoric. To the right in red, Hardstuck Support Group, Random Engineer on Anubarak, Ender on Rhaegar, Omar G playing Tassadar, Heathen Dawn on Vala, and Syl playing Blaze. So Feast on Fear for Diablo at level 1 betrays potentially another auto-attack build. We've got Killer Fairy and Ronin sharking around the top side. And they will start this side lane siege. Killer Fairy used their haunting wave. So they might go down here. One more bounce from the Hungering Arrow would have done it. Five hero commitment from the High Inquisitors to the top side. Means they're going to miss a little bit of this mid wave. Most likely. Um, other important level ones. Tuesday's free opting for simple geometry for the Hanzo. A big stun in onto two. There's the wall behind Tuesday's free, but they're still relatively healthy. Plubis is there to shatter charge for the peel. Uh, so, created the Hunter, and Ender has opted for the Stormcaller quest at level 1. Already up to 12 stacks there. I don't even know what the rewards are on this thing. Rhaegar's health and mana. Okay. Make Rhaegar tankier. They're going to get a lot of quest stacks here, but they're going to fall, of course. First takedown going over to the High Inquisitors. Ronin made the rotation down to support that camp. So Sil is getting a lot of free experience here on the top side of the battleground. Random Engineer not respecting the bush immediately walks into Blue Abyss. So two quick takedowns for the High Inquisitors. Of course, they're dead even on experience because of that minion focus from Sil. Omar G falling very low. They will manage the takedown. Even Dawn able to make it to safety. So, 1,200 experience for those three hero takedowns. But they're missing a fair bit of uh, minion experience. At least they were. They've made a lot of it back. So, I guess... The five hero commitment for the High Inquisitors was all they needed to make the difference. Both teams at level four talent tier for this next fight. Blue Abyss has once again opted, opted for Light Bleach. So auto attack Diablo reigns supreme. First objective here, it's a Mortar Punisher in the bot lane. Both teams have got the top side camp out. Oh my gosh, a lot of damage onto Random Engineer here. Stuns onto Blue Abyss. A great wall from Omar G, but it's already a 20 skeletal defender lead in favor of High Inquisitors. Up to 30 now of the 40 they need. There's the stun in from Random Engineer from Out of Vision. Still follows up with the Jet Propulsion. Killer Fairy will fall. The first takedown from Hardstuck. Random Engineer able to scoot to safety thanks to their movement speed on their shield at level 4. That the uh, Shed Exoskeleton. The High Inquisitors just need to get 9 more, but Hardstuck are making most of the room back they need. Ronin goes down. 
unable to secure the objective. Kurama falling low. Blue Abyss as well. 38 to 36, 39 now in favor of Hardstuck Support Group, and they're able to take it. So first objective going over to the red team. Of course, in top, RNG favored the High Inquisitors, so a fair bit of damage done there from the Shaman camp. Mortar Punisher, not the most powerful in the early game. And we've got Ronin making another rotation down. They land the slow onto Heathen Dawn. I don't think High Inquisitors are going to be able to follow that up. And still able to finish off the rest of that Bruiser camp there. Ronin continues lurking. Uh, both sides have their level 7s now. Desperate Prayer. Yep, Diabolical Momentum. Even Dawn going the same uh, Psionic Storm build that we saw out of Killer Fairy in Game 2. And uh, Ender continues to surprise me. Blood and Thunder at level 7. Um. <laughs> Omar G, I'm sorry, uh, Heathen Dawn up to 44 stacks on Creed of the Hunter. Not quite as many as I think they'd like. Um, uh, they haven't died, so they still have all of their attack speed. Um, and we're, once again, we're still neck and neck in the experience department. Way more minion experience going over to hard stuff. Killer Fairy eats the double stun. Blue Abyss finds Heathen Dawn. And Ronin flanking in from the side. Looks like they're going to think better of it. Right before the heroic talent here. It was a decent time for High Inquisitors to try and find a fight. Uh, since they are behind to that important talent tier. Speaking of, we've got Ancestral Feeling, Black Hole, Reign of Vengeance, Bunker, and Cocoon. Of course, Hardstuck Support Group made themselves scarce on the battleground, so they did not end up in a down talent tier fight. They've got heroics of their own. Wailing Arrow, Holy Word Salvation, Apocalypse, and Tomb. And, uh, who says freeze? Thinking about it. Huge Entomb onto four, followed up by the APOC. Everyone not able to get into the bunker. Most people does, don't even click on it. Oh my god, Killer Fairy taking so much damage. What a great protect from Kurama. And there's the flip in onto Sil. Sil no longer has the bunker, and they will go down. Blaze, first to fall in the engagement. Looks like the rest of Hard Hardstuck support group will make it out right as the objective spawns in top lane. It's an arcane punisher. We'll see if anyone gets cheeky on this rotation. Blue Abyss still mounted. But in the end, Hardstuck support group can play it safe. They were able to finish off that bot fort. So passive catapult pressure is in their favor on the bot side of the map for the rest of the game. With the five hero commitment from the High Inquisitors, I love this rotation from Hardstuck support group in mid lane. They're taking advantage of the Anubarak Beetles getting a lot of structure damage. They stand to get a whole fort here. The High Inquisitor is responding in kind with the Sylvanas push. Sil finds two with the Jet Propulsion. And about a half fort on both sides. There's a stun in onto Blue Abyss from Random Engineer. Kurama has the Leap of Faith. A relatively early Dragon Strike from uh, Tuesday's free there. And, of course, the all-important objective capture going over to the High Inquisitors. There's the stun in onto Random Engineer. Blue Abyss would love to find this takedown. I don't know if they'll have their Shadow Charge up for the next Punisher jump. And Hardstuck Support Group is going to back all the way off. Ronin has to split off to mid lane to deal with Sill. Sill continuing to push on this structure, but they're tanking tower shots to do so. Yeah, there's the Entomb on the bot side. It's going to draw the bunker. 
We'll keep our eye on it. All right. So top keep wall took a lot of damage. Random Engineer eats two stuns. There's the cleanse onto the beetle. Killer Fairy in a lot of trouble here. Kurama once again with the protect, but still interrupts this time. A uh, Dragon Strike splits the team for Hardstuck. A lot of damage onto the Vala. They go down. CW Ender falling low themselves. There's another stun from Sil. Both teams on the level 13 talent tier now. Blue Abyss continuing to wail away. Random Engineer, no mana here. They're going to chase him down. Ronin has to back up. What a great stun from Blue Abyss. They're getting a lot of value out of their level 13. Once again, Cruelty combined with Diabolical Momentum making the difference in these team fights. Blue Abyss continuing to get huge Shadow Charges. Their ability to line up those terrain impacts is a real challenge for Hardstuck Support Group to deal with. I almost question if they would be better served cocooning the Diablo rather than the Anduin. Um, saving the Charge of Rain of, Ven Rain of Vengeance for the Power Holy Word Salvation. Um, it's hard to say, hard to say. Any other 13s of import? Nothing too out of the ordinary. Omar G opting for Shadow Walk. Ronin finds Heathen Dawn in the in tomb. There's the APOC as well. Heathen Dawn receives the Ancestral Healing. They're able to stun. Tuesday's free, taking a lot of damage here, but they're pulled out, and it's Killer Fairy to fall. Still connects with the low. Omar G does not have another force fall, looks like. There it is. Silk connects with the stun once again. That is the Black Soul Stone taken away from Blue Abyss. So a Diablo takedown will probably net the uh, mid-keep, or mid-fort random engineer already spending their beetles to take care of business. So now we've got a single fort lead in favor of Hardstuck Support Group. The High Inquisitors are a little bit closer to their level 16s, uh, thanks to their mercenary and hero takedown experience lead. But the passive XP now in favor of Hardstuck Support Group might be a difference maker. So the objective spawning in mid means that Hardstuck Support Group have an advantage as they've got a well to tap at. We've got Ender showing in top lane on the Rhaegar. If the High Inquisitors are able to find a connection, they're probably going to wait for the APOC to come back up. Another two seconds on that heroic. In this poke scenario, it looks like Hardstuck are advantaged up to 18 now. There's the stun in onto Random Engineer. A silence follow up as well. Entomb into the Dragon Strike. A great bunker saves three of Hardstuck support group. Still looking for the Blue Abyss stun, but does not find it. Blaze will go down here. All of the High Inquisitors still very healthy. Stun in from Random Engineer. That's a heavy commitment from the beetle. Is it auto attack build for Leoric? It sure is. Ronin really laying the smack down with that mighty mace of his. And that means the next objective, Frozen Punisher, importantly, goes over to the High Inquisitors. I would love to have seen uh, the High Inquisitors save their Black Arrows for the keep here, um, given the Frozen Punisher's interaction with buildings. We're at structural parity. Random Engineer uses the Burrow Charge to escape. Tuesday's free, looking for a little bit of poke damage with that Dragon Strike. John Cena finds two with the stun and the root follow up. In the end, Hardstuck Support Group able to weather the worst of the storm. 
losing about a quarter of their mid keep there. Both of our offlaners have shown on distant waves, so our teams are aware it's 4v4. Hardstuck support group, they're playing it safe behind their fort wall. I think that makes a lot of sense. They are advantaged in bot lane, so keeping that advantage, I think, is something they're probably playing for. Still, working on this camp alone is going to be found by the rest of High Inquisitors. They've got Bunker. They'll drop it there, but the Entomb is in time. That is a camp steal and a blaze takedown for the High Inquisitors. Would love to see them push up with their catapult and siege camp in mid. They're instead opting for the top keep with their bruiser camp. Apoc still available. The High Inquisitor is able to find a little bit more damage there on the top keep, but unwilling to look for a fight before they achieve their next talent tier, just about a level away from their storm talents. And they are putting the pressure on Hardstuck Support Group. It's our only undefeated team in Division B East. And the current number one in the standings. In these tense rotational vision moments, Random Engineer just face checking all these bushes. Uh, Tuesday's free with the. Oh my gosh, they're in. There's the Will of the Forsaken. Sill does not connect. The Wailing Arrow catches two. Blue Abyss falling low here, even Dawn able to pepper them down with Manticore. It's an important talent tier for Vala, but I think the CC, the auto attack speed reduction, the blinds, these are the tools that I think hard stuck support group really need to deal with the auto attack Diablo. And uh, suppressive fire picked up by Sill at level seven rather than nano machine coding. So they have none of those tools. Uh, they do have CC, of course, um, but it's kind of a high commitment option for Random Engineer. Still has shown in top lane, they're looking for the rest of the experience they need to finish off the level 20 talent tier. Lior completing their level 16 Mithril Mace. We'll see if a Hellgate comes in from Blue Abyss. Dragon Awakens. Oh my gosh, Omar G, what are you doing, bud? He's gonna fall here. There's the Ancestral. Heathen Dawn falling very low. One more auto attack will do it. Sill makes it in time, but not in time to save the Vala. Random Engineer finding the Cocoon. Blue Abyss charging in once again with the Hellgate. Ronin continuing to lay the smackdown with the Mace. They don't have Buried Alive anymore. It's the upgrade Light of Stormwind, but I think you need a full channel. Killer Fairy used their Bolt of the Storm to escape there. 27 to 15 on objective minions. And a heavy push in the top lane. Hardstuck support group. They're going to send Sill back to deal with the Bruiser camp. Would have loved to see the High Inquisitors 39 this objective and get their lane pushed up to the fort um, before capping. But what you going to do? After a level 20 teamfight win, it can be hard to calm the nerves and make the more complicated, less intuitive calls. So 5v5, once again, there is extra pressure in mid lane from the siege camp. Random Engineer found by the Punisher stun. It is a Mortar Punisher, so it can do a lot of damage with those uh, little meteors. Omar G, likely the target that the High Inquisitors would like to find once again. 
It looks like the High Inquisitors are going to get through this keep, but I don't know if they're going to be able to go for core. They're not even going to position for it. Sill maybe flanking in on the top side here. Tuesday's free checks the bush with the scatter arrow. Very cautious, diligent play from the High Inquisitors, realizing that the blaze had gone missing. So it's starting to become a little bit of a slow bleed out here for Hardstuck Support Group. Their grasp on the battleground is slipping. With constant catapult pressure in bot and uneven catapult pressure in top. Uh, kind of their only saving grace is the relatively equal pressure in mid, but with a siege camp from the High Inquisitors, even mid lane is in a little bit of a sticky spot. Ronin clears this camp extraordinarily fast with their completed Mithril Mace. And it seems like the High Inquisitors are going to focus their efforts here in top lane. This jungle is one of the scarier ones to find a Diablo in. So I think it's a wise choice for them. And they're doing a great job to keep the Diablo hidden. Even though I'm kind of stepping out on the top side there, but just enough to get those minions moving. Next objective is spawning in top lane. It's a frozen Punisher. Tuesday's free trying to scout with the scatter arrow. What'd they opt for? It's 16. It would have to be Pierce into the Anubarak, I would think. Yeah, they have opted for Pierce. Still showing on the bot wave. We'll give Ronin license to clear up this top wave once again. We'll see how the High Inquisitors choose to utilize this Bruiser camp. If they want to hold it for the next objective phase or try and secure this top keep. It's taken a fair bit of damage with this catapult connected now. Down to below half HP. Oof. It's tense. It's tense. Objective announced. And Ronin showing in bot lane, putting the pressure on trying to turn things around in the winion category. They lost game one to a split push. We'll see Hardstuck support group are going to send their heroes down to try and manage those waves. I guess not. Okay, so two catapults mounting there. Full vision granted by the Sonic Arrow from Tuesday's Free, Random Engineer. Gonna have a hard time dealing with the damage from Ronin. Seven objective minions. No one has scouted Blue Abyss. This is gonna be a huge play from the Diablo. They find OMRG once again. There's the cleanse from Ender. Random Engineer is taking a lot of damage. Even Dawn zoned out from the stun, but Blue Abyss finds the Anubarak once again. They were unable to use the Cocoon. There's the Entomb. The Ancestral will save Sill. They still have Bunker. Oh, but they lose Vala as well. Catapults have officially started connecting with the core. It's three Catapults nonetheless. That's a lot of potential damage. We'll see if the next wave is going to spawn in time. I don't think it will. So we might actually see some core damage, not just shield damage. Yeah, all the way down below 80%. So, a healthy Frozen Punisher, a battered top keep, and only three heroes will make for a tough defense from Hardstuck Support Group. Omar G is their best wave clear, but their best single target damage, of course, was in the form of Vala. Even Dawn missing for this defense can be somewhat of a problem for them. Still taking so much damage, they commit the bunker. Ronin, oh my gosh, connecting with Omar G, another great cleanse from Ender. Random Engineer scoots out of the Entomb. 
but John Cena jumps onto Omar G here. Core down below 60% now. It's a lot of damage, and the Punisher is still full HP. I don't think Hardstuck Support Group can make this comeback. They take out Karama, but in the end, they can't stop the Punisher. GG and well played to our home team. A tense one to the very end, but the High Inquisitors had just that little bit of clutch factor they needed to turn the series in their favor. Uh, super well played by them. We can take a look at our post-game stats here. Uh, Tuesday 3, lots of damage on the Hanzo at almost 71k. Um, and once again, the story is kind of told in the takedown count, 13 to 7 uh, in favor of Hardstuck Support Group. Uh, talents, nothing too strange. Random Engineer opting to go for the uh, more historically meta Anubarak build, uh, with beta build, Beetle build being far more meta, meta now. Uh, Okie doke. So let me see if I've got teams available for an interview. We saw High Inquisitors take it, and they did supremely well in their uh, last two Battleground selections. And it looks like I'll be joined here shortly by a couple members of the High Inquisitors. Just want to finish getting us prepped. And then we can get to our interview. Uh -uh. Hello, hello. Hi. Whoa. GG's. How are you feeling after that series? Really good. Super great. Pretty good. I was told I had to be here. <laughs> so I'm here. Crouton has to be here. Excellent. That's Tuesday. Anytime I can beat Ender is a, is a good day. Good, good. <laughs> so I take it there is some history between your two squads in that case? Wow. Uh, well, no. I don't know about that, but there's a lot of history between me and Ender. Ah, okay. I, I also, <laughs> Ender was one of the first uh, people I've met when I joined this game like a couple years ago. But no history between the two teams. Gotcha. Okay, fair enough. Um, so, you guys are now officially the number one ranked team in the division. How does it feel? It feels good, but we well. still have another game, another match to play. Yeah, Dude, Gen M's still we? on the board. Do we? They're super good. Oh. Gen... We got Gen M and Animaniacs left. Yep, yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Gen M, definitely formidable opponents. Um, oh, yeah. We, uh, I'm in, you know, I, I'm in the same dip with y'all. So, from experience, I can well, say, I know who you are. yeah, they're no joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, after game one, uh, how was the morale? Um it can be tough. It wasn't too bad. I mean, that was it was a tough comp to play against. So I feel like morale kinda... has definitely been worse after a loss than definitely. morale was after the first loss tonight. Excellent. And that's why we uh... kind of switched up roles. I I kind of came in tired today anyway, so my morale remained a little bit the same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Those outside factors definitely fact can contribute to game results. <laughs> Um, the swap to Battleground selection for games two and three, I was a little bit surprised to see y'all do it, but it seems to have worked out, of course. Uh, controlling the Vala pick, I had assumed was going to be a high priority, given how much preference you have it have for it, as well as Hardstuck Support Group. Uh, what is it about the Battleground selection that you felt was the difference maker? Um, uh, do you mean the map, like us doing map pick instead of first pick? Yes. Um, I actually always, I almost always prefer map pick because I like controlling the last DPS slot for a counter or an offlane. 
I, I definitely like leaving a, a DPS slot to counter the four man. Um, but so that's why I like map pick, not necessarily because of the map, because I think we could play well on any map, except I hate BOE. That's why I ban it. Like the second map ban, I just kind of pick something random. <laughs> but um, I, we kind of like every map, um, but I definitely like having last pick. And we weren't too really, we weren't really worried about picking Vala. I know I picked it in the first, well, we picked it in the first game. I was going to play it, but I really didn't want to pick it early. I was kind of thinking to pick it late, but I know we we wanted it, and I'm, I'm kind of leaning a little bit away from ball. I played it so much this season. So it was, it was definitely nice for us all to play different things, and having that last pick made the difference. That makes a lot of sense. And the draft flexibility that you all have with how much role swapping you do um blue abyss on the diablo absolutely terrorizing art stuck support group in games two and three <laughs> he is uh the best diablo i've ever seen um unfortunately he's a, a bit shy and doesn't want to come and talk totally but um i am actually surprised they let the diablo through again i would have banned his diablo anytime i see it He's the kind of Diablo that will just charge right in, under your fort and kill you by mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's definitely, it's, I mean, I mean, NGS kind of knows he plays it now, but it was something we like to keep in our back pocket. But all of us have a tank that we specialize in. So it's nice. Like we talked in Nexus Schoolhouse about flexibility. So it's nice to be able to switch off to whatever people are best at. Absolutely. It leaves the draft wide open. Uh, I was talking about it in between games. Uh, before this series, y'all had played 41 heroes across the cast, so almost <laughs> half, almost half what? of the cast. <laughs> um, and tw yeah. 23 of those, so 56% of those heroes had only been played for a single game. Wow, I didn't realize that. Yeah, so I, like I didn't even get my Kira game cast in. That was like an awesome game. <laughs> that was like the best Kira game I've ever had. I'm probably never gonna play it again, but I got to do it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so as we get into the last couple of weeks of the regular season, do you all think that that draft flexibility is gonna continue to propel you into the postseason? How are you feeling looking towards playoffs? Are you guys waiting for me to answer? <laughs> um, um, oh, go ahead. Okay, I I mean, I feel like the games we won was because of draft flexibility. Um, the games I felt like we lost, uh, I think it was because we were so stuck doing the same thing. Um, I I really like, I I think everybody has more fun and does better when they play what they want and we switch. I don't know if that's how everybody feels, but it's how yeah. I feel. Yeah, I don't like to play the same thing all the time, so... Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it, I'll play Assassin this game, tank, offlane, who knows, you know? Yeah, it, it definitely felt nice to play some damage again, so... And that's Tuesday. Yep. Uh, he's our offlaner, but he plays a mean Hanzo. Indeed. And he had quite a good... a few... Um, he played the Sylv the second game. Yeah, so that's huge something wailing me and him arrows. both play. Yeah. And um, being so. able to swap a hero between two of your players is so useful. You know, drafting it, thinking that this looks good, but then being able to pivot and draft there. Oh yeah, that's why he's like, okay, I want to play the Hanzo, and I'm like, okay, just give me the Sylve. I'm, I'm rusty on her, I haven't played her in a while, but it, it is one of my main heroes, and it's one of his main heroes, too. I don't really play the Hanzo, so it worked out. Yeah, it looked great. Um, all right. I won't keep John your ear off, but before you leave for your team celebration, any shout-outs you want to give, the floor is yours. Um, thank you mm -hmm. to you, the sound, for casting this game. I was really surprised to get uh, our second like live cast. That's really awesome. Shout out to my team again. Um, you guys are all awesome. I love them. Yeah, I'm sure we'll see hard stuck again in the playoffs. So it'll be yeah, uh, it'll they, be fun. They played very well. 
Yes. Yeah. Our Even Blue matches. Abyss really wants to get a pin, so <laughs> we're trying to win this. He says he really wants a pin. It's his first time playing NGS, and he heard that you guys give out pins, <laughs> so we have to try to get the pin. Uh, I'll tell you, Blue Abyss, as someone who has the good fortune to have received one of the pins, it's all worth it. <laughs> you keep that fire yep. alive. So the last time What's he's actually pin? really played with some, I guess I've never heard of it when because I'm kind of new to it. What was that running? When you win grand finals, you get a pin. I got one too. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. No, not bragging, but yeah. <laughs> not bragging at all. <laughs> so I, I remember uh, when I met Blue, I see I'm, I'm somewhat new to the game. I'm, I've only been playing for two years, and I'm kind of new to MGS. I started playing a few seasons ago. But I talked to Blue, and he said he played in something called Chair League, which I guess it was before NGS was a thing. Yes, that, so... that is before my time as well. <laughs> yeah, so this is like his first time back and then he was like, oh, I heard they got pins. Like, we gotta win. He's like, next season, we have to like really try because he wants that pin too. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I would wish you luck towards getting that pin, but since we're in the same division, I, right. I hope to get that pin. Yeah, we're enemies. Yeah. So we, you will, we will defeat you. <laughs> and right back at you. Uh, <laughs> but great games tonight. Really well played, y'all. Have a good evening. All right, you good too, Good evening. You too. Thank you. So there you have it, folks. It's uh, excellent showing from our now number one place team in Division B East. They picked the map four games two and three and it made all the difference hard stuck support group definitely showed a lot of strength across the series it's no surprise that they are in second place given how well they play but tonight the high inquisitors were the better of the two uh, before i sign off i'll give some shout outs of my own first and foremost to everyone for tuning in and cheering along with our squads it's a huge community effort to have a league as vital as ngs and part of that is all of you tuning in and showing up for these broadcasts uh and of course we wouldn't have a league without all of the volunteer staff of ngs so a huge shout out to them and last but not least all of the artists programmers and musicians whose work i feature here on the stream you can find links to all of their work below, as well as coming up in a credit roll here shortly. Uh, please do check out their work. It's all Creative Commons licensed, so it could be in your next project as well. Definitely go check them out. Until next time, good luck and have fun. Peace and love. <laughs>